recorder. I just started the recorder. <laughs> so we missed the announcement section, but that's uh, not that that big of a deal. So um, we're just now starting with our S2U update. So I'm going to give Marcus presenter so that he can do a quick screen share and let us know what the um, EDF folks have been building for the S2U group. Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, I would like to say thanks to all the sponsors you see up here. They're funding the STU Unit Digital project. And if anyone wants to try out all these features that I'm showing today or that are coming or that Miguel was showing in the past, you can find them, them on stu.edf.global. Okay, the first, the first feature I want to show you is an addition to roster, which will add uh, new columns for sections and groups to the export. So if we go to the roster, we'll load for a second, um, then we can do an export. So we'll download an Excel file. And now we have here this group sheet that was already here. Uh, and we'll have uh, the students here grouped for every group and for every section. But now the new addition is that we have this sections sheet where we will see the students grouped for each section and it will also display the section categories. And yeah, this is this new addition. Mm -hmm. The, the second item I want to show you is, is an announcement. And this is to create announcements for, for each role. Or uh, we can create announcements for specific roles. I don't find my Sakai anymore. Oh, here. <laughs> mm, so now I'm admin. And I could add a new announcement. For example, announcement for students. Um, let me copy that. So now here we have the selection. Display this announcement to selected roles only. And if I select that, I can choose for which role I want to set this announcement. So here I'm going to choose students. And I will post the, the announcement. Now, if I log out and I log in as a student, I will see the announcement. Um, can also try that as an instructor. And we will not see an announcement because it will only display for the student role. Also, we can create a new announcement as an instructor. For example, for instructors. So if I choose here for instructors, it will create the announcement. And if I check this as a um, student, the student will not oh, the student will not see the announcement for the instructors. Now, if I check this as another instructor, 
we will see the announcement for the instructors, but not for the students that I created before. And one thing to note is that when you create, for example, as an instructor, the announcement for students, it will display for just for students, but also to the instructor that created it. So it will show for for the role that is selected and for the owner or the creator of this announcement. And also the admin, admin will also see every announcement. So now you can also do announcement for everyone. And we can do that by clicking here, select all roles. We choose, we'll choose every role. And everyone will see this announcement. So if I choose a student, we will see the announcement for everyone. And if we log in as instructor, we will see the announcement for everyone. Yeah, and that's this feature. Do you have any questions to these features? That's really nice. Thank you. Um, there are a few questions in the chat. Um, DD asked if it only notifies people by role as well. So like if you check the box to notify via email, um, does that only send to the, the people with the appropriate role? <laughs> Let's see if we add a new announcement, for example, for students. Mm. OK, if I choose here the email notification, mm -hmm. I think everyone gets the notification that that's selected. Yeah. I mean, okay. I did not test it, but I mean, I can let a note here for for Miguel, and he will clarify that next time. Okay. But I would think that just these roles get notified. Everyone right. who, who is selected here, for example, teaching assistant, only teaching assistant will get the notifications for this announcement. Great. Um, and let's see, Didi also asks, how does it display in the uh, the lessons widget? Is it pretty much just the same as a normal announcement? Only you know, only the people with permission would see it. Mm, I don't know about this. I mean, yeah, there's a widget in lessons to show recent announcements. Mm -hmm. mm, we could try it if we want. Um, right now, instructor, uh, if I add the uh, lessons tool, lessons can add the embedded announcement. announcements. Yeah. Okay. So this is the announcement that we created for the instructors and for everyone. So if I open this for as a student, lessons, it will show for everyone and the students. So okay. yeah, it will, it will respect that the rules. Awesome. Um, and just out of curiosity, if you if you're in there as the instructor, if you do student preview, does it? Um, respect to the preview option. Mm, let's see. In lessons? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Lessons are, are anywhere really, but I was thinking of lessons. Lessons. Yeah, so if 
if you view site as student. student. Mm -hmm. It will show for instructors here. Yeah, OK. I was just curious. The student preview isn't perfect anyway, so. <laughs> um, I, d I have a question, actually. Is this only in the, the course sites, or is this um, role availability also in the admin announcement tool where you can send a message of the day? Mm, I'm not sure, but we can check that. This is on the administration workspace, right? Mm -hmm. There's the announcement tools. Announcements. Yeah. Add one here. No, here it's not available. Okay. It would here be nice there. <laughs> I would like it there, but <laughs> that's another feature request. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a note though. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? Nope. Looks really great, by the way. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, these are great improvements. It's exciting to see new stuff being added all the time. It's great to you. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you, Marcus. I appreciate you showing us that. And we'll look forward to the next demo um, at our next meeting. So um, to have even more new stuff shown for us. So. Um, Okay, so the next thing I have on the agenda is uh, JIRAs. So let me go ahead and I'll share my screen. And we can look at some JIRAs. Okay. Should we see my screen now? Um, all right, so let's see. We have a few in here um, in the parking lot. So we'll take this first one from Jennifer. This is, uh, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat too. Um, this is forum settings rubrics should not be displayed as a drop down menu. Jennifer, since this was one of the ones that you suggested, do you want to kind of talk us through it a little bit? Sure. Um, there's an image there, but when you set up your uh, discussion forum, uh, it will let you set everything up and then it has this grading rubric and you can't change anything in it. It doesn't let you add a rubric. It's sort of. Um, sometimes it will actually default to like, if you have rubrics, it'll default to the first one. So people think it's using that rubric. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has experienced this. We've had a couple people report it. Um, so I know Derek put this in and I thought I would, I had somebody ask me last week. So I thought I would push it up a little bit and see what other schools, if they've seen this, we are on 21.4, um, on our instance of Sakai. And we've seen this for quite a while. I thought the last group of fixes might have fixed it, but it seems to still be doing it. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, and Adrian's on the call, so he can probably speak to this as well. But if I'm not mistaken, this is by design because of the way that the forum interacts with the grade book. So in forums, when you create a graded item, you don't actually create the grade book item. You just link it to a grade book item. Yes. And um, and so the grade book item is the one that has the the rubric attached to it. Um, yes. So right now, I, I think at one point there were problems with people trying to attach a different rubric to the forum than the grade book had. And then it, it was like there was clashing there as to which rubric should be used. Um, and so now it's grayed out. So you have to select the grade book item and and change the rubric on the grade book item, not on the forum. So I think that's what's happening here. But Adrian, can you confirm that that's correct? Yeah, that's 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 right. That's that sounds about right. Yeah, I mean maybe there's maybe there's some confusion, um, you know, from from that thing that's being displayed there, right? But um, but yeah, yeah, it's like either the first rubric alphabetically, or it'll say what it says in that screenshot, and you can't click it. So I think it's just a matter of 
I don't know if we put verbiage there, if we have to keep it because faculty yeah. are trying to tie their rubric there. And if it needs to be there to match that, I'm wondering if we need something to maybe, identify that. Maybe some, just a, a note letting people know that if they want to change the rubric, they need to do it on the grade book item, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So if it's on the grade book item, will it show up here as the right one? It should do, yeah. It I mean, should. okay, so it should populate back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so the whole the whole point of keeping that stuff there is just so you can hit that preview rubric button, right, in the in the forum type thing as a convenience. Um, you know, that's 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 why that stuff's there, just so you can preview it without having to go off to the grade book. But yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, if if that forum topic has not got a rubric attached to it, then really none of that stuff should be showing. That entire row should probably just shouldn't be there, you know? Yeah, if they're not using one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you know, it's, it looks like there's an issue there, you know? Yeah, I mean, if, if there is no rubric, then it's not attached in the grade book, then it shouldn't have the wrong one displayed that's going to be misleading um yeah i mean I, I think i think it shouldn't have any it, should, it shouldn't have that those two controls there just shouldn't show at all really i don't i don't think if you know that's, that's my take on it right if there's no yeah. uh maybe some maybe some kind of words as well uh just to just to clear up that you have to actually attach a rubric in the grade book maybe it might be useful here I mean, if that's causing confusion but uh I'd need some suggested wording for that, all right? That's so. I mean, if, if we've got a Jira ticket for this, if somebody wants to just chip in on that with some suggested wording that might help, just just to inform people that you know, if you want to use a rubric, you have to attach the rubric to the grading item. That I mean, we can we can look at changing that. Yeah, I think one thing that's also confusing is is that there's a drop down menu. You know, it's grayed out indicating yeah. that you can change it, but why do you have a menu if it's something that you can't change at all? Like, oh, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, I, so, I agree, I agree. Um, so maybe it shouldn't be a menu at all, it should just say, you know, grading rubric, and if there isn't one, maybe none or just not show it up at all. But if yeah. it does, then say preview uh, new rubric, you know, like the name of the rubric, yeah, and then. I don't know, in parentheses or something, or a little note next to it um, to change a rubric uh, selected, um, updated in the grade book. Does that? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I suppose, so I suppose we could have, so you could have, you could have that grading rubric title there, right? But mm -hmm. underneath, you could either have the text saying no rubric currently attached to the grading item. Mm -hmm. Or we could show just preview rubric under there, our preview, you know, forum topic rubric or whatever. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Either one of those two things, maybe. Yeah. And then, you know, a note to change rubric, change it in the grade book. Yeah. I don't know what the yeah. best language for this. Does anybody have a suggestion on more succinct language? <laughs> What about something similar to what is in the grade book? Like if you assign like assignments to the grade book and you go to grade, it tells you that you have to go back to assignments, maybe something similar that says, um, you know, rubric assigned in grade book. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. somebody else has better short verbiage than me. <laughs> <laughs> I see Alan typing. Alan's usually pretty good at this. So we'll see what Alan types. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here we go. To use a grading rubric, you must assign one first in the grade book. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. None of us yeah. talked about it both ways. He, he types it right. That's the difference. Yeah. Right? When you type, when you type things, you you use better Think language. Of, you know <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That would be if you don't have one, uh, maybe we should have like a to use or edit in case it's they need to change it. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good Jira. I think uh, yeah. I, I, I see, I see the problem there. I, I, I understand the issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So I will, I'll post a comment 
after the call, um, kind of summarizing what we discussed and I'll, I'll put Alan's suggested um, verbiage there so that we can yeah, I like that one. Grading rubrics must first be assigned within the gradebook. I think that sounds good. Yeah, I like that. Quick, cut, cut and paste it into the Jira. <laughs> I Quick will, before it disappears. <laughs> yeah, I'll paste it into our Etherpad and then I'll, I'll do the Jira later. It's copyright. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so any other comments on this one? And let me remove. Oops, I didn't mean to have caps lock on. I'm yelling at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> remove, drop down. Only show preview if rubric. And that second piece is actually that second JIRA 45703 that someone else, or no, 46673. 46673. And that yeah. was the one we yeah. just looked at. Oh, was we it? Just, okay. Yeah, we just looked at that one. So let me. Because um, they're very similar. Someone, I think someone submitted one and then I submitted one. Well, let's take a look, see if they said anything different. Um, yeah, they're both like one's yeah. about the unlinked rubric and one's about the drop down. So they, they're just two different pieces yeah. of the same thing. By, they're reported by two different people. Right. I don't know if we want to close one or. We, we should probably link the two so that we know that they're. I don't know if it's, 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 is it a duplicate? I don't know. It's close to a duplicate. One is kind of talking a little more about the language, but it's pretty much the same issue. But I'll add a comment anyway, um, I'll, and I'll link the two. All right. Okay, so that's a good one. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Um, we have another one from Jennifer. And that's uh, 45703. And you want to tell us why this one is uh, important? This one a, the, is the drop oh, down. Yeah. Did I paste in the wrong one? Oh, that was the same. You only had two. Sorry, I had you. Yeah. Thought you I pasted the same one twice. Sorry about that. Well, okay. Did you have next. any? Yeah, Alan's <laughs> next. Let me get that one. All right, so this is 47945. And let's see. He notes that Bonnie would also like to, like to talk about the functionality of allow resubmission in the edit assignment page. If you allow them to resubmit after the due date, it may overwrite an assignment that has already been graded. This is a problem. All right, so let's look at the JIRA first and see what's going on there. The uh, core problem to kind of reiterate mm -hmm. is that when someone creates an assignment, uh, currently, if they turn on allowing resubmission, the resubmit until date is set to the deadline, the due date, uh, not the accept until date, right? Okay. And so a lot of professors forget to do this. And then they wonder why all of these students are saying that they can't um, resubmit. Mm. And that's because the deadline has expired. Even though somebody who has never submitted anything has an, an accept until date after the deadline. It's like the people who maybe want to do a re revision or whatever afterwards get kind of penalized or, you know, it creates a quote unquote, the system is broken kind of perception when that's not true. Mm -hmm. So the thought here is that the resubmit until should 
pre-populate in the beginning if you're creating something and you check the box to allow resubmission with the accept until, not the due date, to avoid the majority of use cases that we have seen. We've seen more pain um, by people just assuming, well, if I set an accept until date here, then I'm going to also accept the same thing for resubmissions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> that I makes guess, sense. That makes a lot of I, sense. I think that's logical for me, but I guess Bonnie's suggesting there's another use case that they have that might be different. Um, sure. Yeah, well, let's take take them one at a time. So this one, that makes total sense to me, Alan, and, and Dee Dee agrees in the chat. She says she's been running into the same issue. Um, it seems logical to choose the, the until date because that's going to be the later of the two. Um, so and that you can always yeah. change it. It's just yeah. to populate it in the beginning mm -hmm. and not necessarily have, I mean, people could go crazy and add validation on anything and everything, but I'm just thinking on creation, it'd probably save people, you know, steps, right? Rather than, oh, now I have to go in and I just set this date, you know, like I have to set the date again. Yeah, yeah. or forget to do it completely and then students right. run into the problem. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, I think this makes total sense. Does anybody Here. else have any thoughts? Didi? Plus Didi one. equals one. <laughs> I think I'm one with this idea. Yes, please. Yeah, I like it. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I think that's a winner. So let's look at, at Bonnie's note and see. Bonnie would also like to tell us about the functionality of allow resubmission. Uh, if you allow them to resubmit after the due date, it may overwrite an assignment that has already been graded. Okay, so she's saying if you resub allow resubmissions until whatever accept date it is that's after the due date, but I guess maybe the instructor goes in and grades everything um, before that that resubmission. It's gonna override the grade. Is that the the problem there? That's what it, I'm interpreting well, it as. That is if they. So you're meaning that the instructor is concerned? I don't know. It's a little bit vague because I'm just reading the what mm -hmm. the oh, note I see. here. Um, Okay, over and that every day has been created. Well, that's the thing. The the faculty that I saw, at least this week, it happened to me three times this week. They submit. Uh, yeah, thanks, Alan. I know you're laughing too. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I had two faculty members, and they're like, blah, blah, blah. And um, it took me a few minutes to figure out what the problem was. The, they're looking through their list of assignments. They're looking through the list of students. They're grading. The people that are missing are the ones that had the re had that had not yet submitted so I, I don't understand what they mean by that's going to override it to grade them and then the student could put in another submission to the same assignment that's going to get graded or override it I, i'm not quite sure of the case yeah um i think we well, need you... a little more information from bonnie to make sure we're understanding the issue but and usually kinda... grading should wait right I mean, yeah. if, if technically a lot of, you're a lot still people, allowing people in. A lot of people grade once there's a submission. If they're getting an A, the student won't submit again. Yeah, but so, if you allow resubmissions, then yep. you should grade the resubmitted stuff, right? Yes, yeah. yes. No, no I'm, I agree with that. But the... Um, the students who, so let's say we have um, our type A students who all submit, you know, on the five minutes before the, uh, or right on time, first people right out of the gate, the instructor goes in and grades those people. Mm -hmm. So is the, is the use cases for the people who have not submitted yet, correct? Because the ones who did submit and have a, a return to them, what do you think, Alan? Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, is it more of a, there needs to be a history kind of thing? Like, almost like, solve that, that would be, because uh, I don't know, if, if a student resubmits after it's already been graded, I don't know that it zeroes out the grade, but I haven't tested yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Jennifer um, is wondering if the grade stays, but the file gets overridden. That's what I was thinking, too. Thanks, Jennifer. Right on target. Yeah, I'm not sure. Adrian, do you know off the top of your head? 
um, I know there's no grading history in the grade in the grading service. That's for sure. So I mean, if you've if you basically put a grade in there and then it gets regraded, it'll it'll blow the old one away. But it would but only be regraded be if it. A, yeah. A Go log, ahead, Alan. Right. Sorry. Just like the grade book, like if you change a grade, there should be a log, right? A history. Yeah. Well. There, yeah. Well, uh, there is there is a log, but um, it's not it's not exposed, is it? So we we don't what we really need is stuff in tables rather than rather than this kind of logging thing that we're doing. So it's a bit of a mess, put it that way, you know. So oh, okay. one of the one of the things we want to do with the grading service is is like make this stuff work properly. Yeah, because a history would be really useful. So you could go back and see what the prior submission was and what the grade was, if there was one. Yeah. Um, because there should be one of those. I mean, I'm just thinking of the regular grade book today. There's a grade log, right? Which mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that functions. It sounds like it just saves it to a text file or something. I don't yeah. know. But um, yeah. <laughs> but basically, I can see that like, oh, the TA, you know, tried to overwrite the professor, right? Or something like that. There would be a log of who did it last, right? And and the, the date and time. But um if there isn't a history on the assignments thing, I think there definitely should be one. Yeah, it's a classic, uh, another example of where we want to move functionality from the tools into the grading service. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. One of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that having a history is, is an important thing. Um, I don't know if there's a JIRA for that. Um, I can look, and if there's not, I can create one. But I think this comment is is definitely a different Jira from the one that Alan suggested. Um, it's related because they're both to do with resubmissions. But I think we right. need a, a new Jira for the um, assignment submission history option. Right. And um, I, I would 100% support that. Yeah. Um, I think. Mine is a ease of use for instructors when setting things up, right? To make it a little easier and to avoid some of the headaches, which, you know, um, basically professors then start blaming the system as not being logical or, you know, easy. Um, and so if we could avoid that, that'd be great. And then obviously we don't want things being overwritten or lost or associated with the wrong files. So a history that has the, the date and time and which attachments, just the links to the attachment files that were part of that, that grading event. Um, not duplicating the files themselves, but just linking to those files. Right. Yeah, because they're still in there. They don't get deleted. They're just not accessible to users anymore. Right? Unless right. the student yeah. deletes it. Does, it. does it go away if the student removes it? Oh, yeah, you're asking me. I, I don't know. That's the right <laughs> question, but yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but there, it, ideally it should be kept somewhere. Um, like so, a snapshot um, kind of thing. Yeah, at least the file name. Um, so, okay, well, I'll, I'll open a JIRA on that um, if there isn't one. I don't think that there is, but I'll, I'll do a quick look to make sure it's not a duplicate. Um, okay. So let's see. I could have... also think of another JIRA that's associated that would be student facing. Okay. I.e., let's say it's they're still within that period of resubmission, right? And then at least do a warning of, you know, <clears throat> your assignment has already been graded, right? Um, by resubmitting now, um, this could impact your your grade. Or some, you know, some kind of notice, right? Yeah. That um, this this might not be what you're intending, right? You've are you've already submitted. This is all. This work has already been graded. Um, maybe even a please consult with your instructor before taking this action, kind of a thing. I don't know. Yeah, especially if there's no history. I mean, if there's a history, right. then at least you can go back. But if there's no history, then you're gonna blow away your earlier grade. Potentially, um, it right. would be good to get a warning. Right. And um, also for, a, for faculty, I would think, like, if I'm I'm a faculty member, I've got 
you know, a paper due. And, and let's say I'm, I'm a go-getter, like, like Dee Dee said, and I, I'm grading them as they come in, but I allow resubmissions. Um, maybe if I give somebody a B, they want to redo it to get, try to get an A, but maybe they don't. Um, so it would be nice to know which students have resubmitted after being graded so I know which ones I need to go back to. I don't know if it alerts you or not. I'd have to test it. If they resubmit, does it show up as a new in the assignment? Great question. I don't know. I'll have to check on that. But um, but yeah, it would be nice to know, hey, there's, there's a resubmitted one that you need to go grade. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, like no. a notification. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, any other thoughts on uh, on this issue to do with resubmissions or or associated things? I think. Well, thanks for the sanity check. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should tag Earl on Algeria as well. Yeah. He knows more about this stuff than, than I do, you know, about... Uh, I just know that in the grading service, right, there is there is no... There's not... You can't have multiple grades against one gradable object, if you know what I mean, right? It's just, it's just mm -hmm. one. So if it is being stored, it's being stored elsewhere. Right. I think I remember talking to him about the history and how there needed to be one and there wasn't. Um, yeah. 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 There's, so. there's obviously something. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the code at the minute because <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head where that stuff is. But Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely, um, I'll, I'll tag Earl to take a look at it because I'm in, sure he'll have thoughts. In the comments of that, Jira, uh, Bonnie mentions another previously created JIRA about notifications if the resubmission is set before the due date. That's oh, also does she? related to this, also about notifications, but sort of giving a little more explanation about, I think, some of her concerns. Oh, yeah, no alert if resubmission. Yeah, that's actually what I was thinking of here. So I don't need to make a new JIRA. There's already one. <laughs> but maybe I'll comment on it. Um, good catch. But yeah, that's that was what I was thinking that, you know, you won't know necessarily if somebody has resubmitted if you've already graded. Well, I, I think that one that one specifically is it looks at least from first review, it if you set the extension of the resubmission to end before the due date, then there's no there's no notification to let you know you've set those dates in an odd fashion. So you can only resubmit or the extension even is I think the way that I read it is those are set before the due date. So I think it's still a little a little slightly different than what you were starting to map out. Okay, well, I'll put it back then. <laughs> See if I can undo there we go. Anything to save typing. Um all right, cool. Any other thoughts on resubmissions? While we're on a roll for making new cheers. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Nope. This um, is indeed Jira Palooza. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got a couple more, actually three more from Alan. Alan, do you have a favorite that you want to do first or just in the order listed? I'm scanning. Um, probably just in the order listed. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one we've discussed, but the question is, is how to move how to, it forward. Okay, how to which nudge, one is, nudge it which along. Which one is this? 
This is display active above inactive. Okay, yeah, we have looked at this one. Mm -hmm. And there was general agreement, I think. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a twofer because I have a separate one, which I think accomplishes the goal. And the separate one. Uh, is it here? Is it in our list? Or is... um, oh, okay. Let me actually get the whole kit and caboodle versus just the. That's the link. Okay. Status labels, update labels to improve usability. You know what would be a really opportune time to implement this is when we update the table design for 23. Because we're thinking about you know, uh, modernizing the, the those table views where you have a list of a bunch of items. Um, now, I don't know if we'll get to Samago in 23. Maybe it might be 24, but um, because we had talked about uh, optimizing uh, like things like bulk actions and stuff in those those table menus. And it seems like the status labels would be a good thing to have there that you could sort by and just make the table more functional. That would be quite nice. Yeah. Jeremy's on board. Yeah. Let me, let me see. I know that there's, I'm trying to remember. Okay, this is it, yeah. So you guys, I don't know if you've seen this. This is um some of the this is a mock-up. This is not a, a real functional site. But this was some of the work that um Mike Green and Sean Foster were working on with some of the table redesign. And there is a status column. This is an assignment, obviously, but the, the idea was to be able to um have a similar table design across tools to make them more consistent. So we were potentially going to start with assignments, um, but it seems like Samago would would be my pick for the next table to get a uh, you know rework. Um, so you know, including a, a sortable status there would seem to make a lot of sense to me. So maybe that's a way that we can kind of get more attention on it. Um, Alan is to try to roll it into some of those um, UI updates that are in the roadmap. OK. I mean, one thing would, it would kind of auto, I think it, <clears throat> I don't recall if it, I, right now, I think it orders by due date by default, I think. In tests and quizzes now? I think so. I might be wrong. I can't remember what the default is. I don't think it's by. The assignment title per se i think it was by due date but in any yeah. case that that would be good um and I yeah think it would be nice that, if the sorting good. could be sticky you know like you go in and you sort them the way you like them and they stay that way the next time you go in um i don't know if that's documented anywhere but maybe that would be Jira as well. Oh, Jordan's saying it's the due date. It's sorted by due date. Yeah, so that would be my best suggestion on how to get more attention on this is to try to, um, you know, propose it as part of the, the table redesign work. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't know. We've been talking just anecdotally about maybe starting with assignments for that because there's mock-ups. <laughs> Basically, that was where, um, you know, Sean and, and uh, Mike started because um, it's a good table. It's, it's a tool that's used a lot. Um, it's a little less gnarly than, <laughs> than Samago can sometimes be. But yeah. um, but I don't is, know. I mean, is there a case to do tests and quizzes first instead of well, assignments? I don't know. You can sort every column in tests and quizzes. So you can sort by status today. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, I mean, on mine, I think that there are two, two parts to it. One, changing the labels so that you could sort already, just swapping the labels. But the other part is there's a new label, right? Because right now, published inactive can either mean it's closed, this is, yeah. but was formerly published, right? Mm -hmm. But published inactive could also mean it's scheduled, but it's not open yet. Right. Right. So that would be new programming to set those two different right because those are right now they're the same status but they're actually two different things in Correct. practice yeah yeah i agree that would there would need to be a change there but the, these definitions make more sense in terms of the way you work with tests and quizzes right i like this proposal yeah, on a personal maybe. note, I just think it's it's clean and it mm -hmm. makes total sense. And I don't mean to bring back working copy per se, but W would be at the end of the list. And also, we have so many people deleting drafts because they're quote unquote cleaning things up that yeah. Then yeah. they get confused about why can't I import my stuff? Well, because you deleted your drafts and the drafts are actually important. <laughs> yeah. I like the working copy label much better um, or draft or than the draft well, name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is a, this is your word document that you typed it up and put, you know, and then right. left on your hard drive kind of idea. Yeah. It's your template that needs to keep going. Yeah. Um, but um, by the way, just to be clear, active and then parenthetical published, that would all be in the label. It's not like, I'm not using the parenthetical to explain something like the actual right so the label just, just would actually read this active entire. parenthetical published close parentheses mm -hmm. yeah yeah nice just to be yeah. clear um, all right so then wilma if it is part of that um well this actually doesn't um doesn't have to be tied to the table no. redesign. It could be, but it could be implemented without the table design. Because really, this is only text changes, except for the separation of um, these two items. Correct. Yeah, um, text changes could happen anytime. Yeah, like, so these are fairly easy to implement. Um, you could even do it. I don't, well, I don't know if you could do it in tech in Message Bundle Manager, um, but uh, but it's a text change, so it's not. It's not a hard thing to, to modify, but the splitting of these two statuses would right. require some dev. There um, could be a, a workaround or a, a phased thing before the before that splitting of the two. It could mm -hmm. be active, inactive, published, kind of like flipping it, you know. Um, and then and then working copy draft. And then once the programming of splitting those two things, then those labels could be added. If, if basically the need to make something active show up at the top, that would um, possibly speed that up if that, that continues to be a pain point for folks. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I will, um, I'll update this one just to note that we looked at it and we all agree with it that it would be nice to include. Um, and maybe it's the small enough you know, the text change part, at least, is is small enough that it might be implementable sooner. Um, but I think this other one that talks about um, some of the display ordering and, and things like that could be definitely part of the table redesign um, work that, that needs to happen at some point. So if we kind of tie it into that, we can optimize a lot of these things, I think. All right. Very good. Thank you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, let me put this one in our list because we didn't have it in the etherpad. Okay, so that first one could be part of table UI redesign. And this one, um, Small text changes mainly. Maybe implement sooner 
23, maybe. I don't know if we can get it in, but we could try. Um, so anyway, so that, uh, that's those two. So we've only got about five minutes left. Um, rather than taking on another JIRA, I'd like to just kind of look at our schedule um, for upcoming meetings. So March 15th is our next session that we have scheduled. Um, and we don't have a topic for that day yet. Um, so I was thinking maybe I, I see Christina's on the call. Um, Christina, what do you think about talking about the bulk um, operations? And we had talked about that at Sakai Camp a little bit, but maybe we could flesh that out a little more with this group. Sure. All right. So. I at least get more warning to talk about it than I did at Sakai Camp. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like being put on the spot, huh? So I'm going to put you down to lead that, if you don't mind, since you're our resident um, torchbearer for that particular <laughs> Um, thing, but you had some really great ideas. So, um, so we will have that as our bulk uh, operations topic for the 15th. Um, now, tentatively for the 5th, um, there's going to be a demo on uh, this PASAM uh, software that some of the folks in Spain are using. Um, it's not confirmed yet. I have to confirm with Miguel, but one of the universities um, over there is it's a separate uh, project from Sakai, but it is going to be open sourced. And it's a pretty interesting sort of alternative grading type of software. I can't explain it very well, but the, the demo on the fifth or thereabouts will explain it much better than I can. So, so we have that one tentatively um, for the fifth. And then our April 19th session is open. Um, does anybody have any thoughts? I mean, we also have some things down here that we sort of earmarked for future potential topics. Um, we could do specifications grading, if you like. Um, I could lead that discussion or, or more generally um, non-numeric grading, which is something that I've worked up a concept doc for. Um, and maybe we could talk about that on the 19th, unless somebody else would prefer to do something else that date. <laughs> Jordan's on board for specs grading. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll put that one down for the 19th. Just so I remember that I'm, what I'm supposed to be talking about that day. Um, and I'll throw in the non numeric. So we could talk a little bit about stuff like ungrading and holistic grading too, because they're sort of related. All right. Um, okay. So. Let's see, our next session after that would be in May. Put in my calendar, hang on a second. That would be May 3rd. Does anybody have any ideas for things they would like to tackle in May? I see the Sakai analytics. Would I be interested in that since it's towards the end of the term or maybe for later in May? Okay. Maybe we could tie that in a little bit to roadmap discussions because it is one of the things on the roadmap. So maybe we can kind of talk about, you know, what people would want in what order and how we can get that sort of worked into the overall community workflow. All right. So I'll put May 15 or not 15. It's, it's what 18th No. It's the next 17th. Okay. 17th. Anybody have any thoughts? If not, we can just leave it open. No? All right. We'll just leave it open for now. If you have any thoughts of things you want um, to talk about or people that you'd like to hear from, um, please let me or Dee Dee know. We'll be happy to add you to the schedule. So um, it is the top of the hour, and um, I don't want to keep you guys late. So um, thank you, everyone, for attending today, and hopefully I'll see you in a couple weeks 
and we'll talk, be talking about bulk um, operations with Christina. So um, that should be a good discussion. Hope you'll join us. Have a great week. Thank you, everyone.